Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Good Friday Daily Devo. Um, today is a is a sad day. Uh, it's also a day of hope. Uh, and even though it says Good Friday uh, on the title, this is this is a day not to not to be celebrating. Um, Easter is a day for celebrating. Good Friday is a day that we remember that even though this is a part of God's plan, um, it's a part of God's plan that included incredible suffering and incredible pain for us. And it's good for us to remember that. It's good for us to live in that and, and understand it, to, to see the pain of Jesus and take it on and, and, and look to it. So we've been walking through Jesus' life right now, uh, and specifically his last week on earth. We've seen him be arrested in the garden, be betrayed. We've seen him be spit upon and mocked. Uh, his clothes uh, divided. Uh, we've seen him carry his cross to the hill, and now we're going to see it actually happen. Um, and my goal for you guys is that this devotional is just a little springboard for a day spent um, with the Lord, spent in his word, and spent seeing his power in your guys' life. So with that, let's let's pick it up at Matthew 27, verse 45. <clears throat> It says, from noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's say if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. And they came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. So Jesus cries out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then in another gospel, we see that he actually says, It is finished. Um, and then he, he gives up his spirit at that point, And this is the end of Jesus' earthly life before he is resurrected. But why did he... Why did he say those words? I think that's always been something that's confused me or given me a hard time. Why does Jesus say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because clearly he, he wasn't forsaken by God, right? He was resurrected. He's God's son. And even though God was giving him up to die and experience this pain, he was still going to be with the Lord in eternity and sit at his right hand. So why say, why say something like this? And you could, you could look at it as just an emotional statement, like this is what Jesus was feeling, even though he knew it wasn't true. That's a possibility. But in, in, in reality, it, more likely, uh, what he's doing is he's drawing our eyes and attention to Psalm 22. And Psalm 22 starts like this in, in verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. And this is something that the the Jews who were sitting at the cross would have all known. They would have recognized this, this voice. They would have recognized these words as being from Psalm 22. But Psalm 22 isn't just a sad psalm about experiencing pain and suffering. Psalm 22 is actually about redemption and trust in the Lord and final resolution and fulfillment of his promise. That's what Psalm 22 is really about. And so what I want to encourage you guys to do today is as you're pondering and, and, and just feeling the weight of Jesus' death on the cross, I want his last words to, to tune your, your attention to Psalm 22 as something that is, is powerful and good and hopeful for us. And I just want to read the very last bit of Psalm 22. In verse 30, it says, sorry, in verse 29, it says, All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. 
They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. That's how Psalm 22 ends. And that's our prayer, and that's our hope. Jesus has done it. And his his words right here are a fulfillment of the end of Psalm 22. They are a proclaim. They're they're proclaiming to a to a people yet unborn, us, two thousand years ago, a proclaiming to us that He has done it. He has defeated sin and death. Jesus saying these words might have been an emotional statement, but most likely they were a statement of of victory and they're a statement of of power over the world, over sin and death. And this statement gives us hope. That's my encouragement to you guys today. You guys have a great day spending time with family and spending time in the Word and just worshiping the Lord today. I want to encourage you guys to check out Andrew Peterson's resurrection album, Prologue. Um, it's, it's, meant, it's, it's all about the crucifixion um, and it's just powerful. It's a great way to worship to him and I know a couple of you guys have actually been asking me for some good songs to listen to on Good Friday, and that's my recommendation. So it's Andrew Peterson's Resurrection Prologue album, um, and it'll just help you. It'll help you get in the right state of mind as as we worship the King today. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.